Welcome everybody to the Biotsal webinar number 59. Today we have X3 DNA or DSSR, a resource for structural bioinformatics of nucleosid. The presenter of today is Shang Chu Lu from Columbia University. I'm hosting this webinar together with Stefan Farr from University of Edinburgh. Today's presenter is Shang, Shang Chu Lu. He's a researcher, scientific researcher at Columbia University. He's a specialist in nuclear acid structural bioinformatics, and he has a huge amount of publication connected to 3DNA and DRS software. So now I will give the word to him so he can tell us about these tools. Hi, everyone. And I'm Xiang Yun Lu. I'm the developer of 3DNA and DSSR. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you X3DNA DSSR, a resource for structural bioinformatics of nuclear acid. DSSR stands for dissecting the special structure of RNA. It excels in structural bioinformatics of nuclear acids, including DNA, RNA, and their complexes with proteins. DSSR performs structure analysis. It is set it along with some other well-known software tools by leading scientists in top journals. DSSR produced block wheel schematics with unprecedented clarity. DSSR had advanced model building capabilities. DSSR can be easily integrated into other bioinformatic resources. DSSR has unique features for G quadruplexes. Under promise over deliver, that is the principle I have followed while developing DSSR. Publish the results and the documented features of DSSR are reproducible, period. In fact, DSSR has a lot more to offer. It enables innovative cutting edge applications. To better understand DSSR, we need to go back in time. DSSR is built upon 3DNA. Three DNA stands for three-dimensional nucleases. It was developed around year two thousand while I was a postdoc at Wilma Olsen Lab at Rad at Rutgers. Here are the two key publications of three DNA. One is two thousand three NR paper, another is two thousand eight Nature Protocol paper. These two papers are well cited. Even today, 3DNA NR paper is still cited at roughly 100 times per year. More recently, we have built a web interface, updated web interface for 3DNA. And this is the resource you will need to get access to the new features. The published work was highlighted in Nucleus Research in 2009 web server issue. If you are interested, the color image itself is reproducible. 3 DNA calculates DNA shape parameters. I think some of you are familiar with the figure on the right. This figure was initially created in the 2003 NR paper. Over the years, it has become very popular. To my knowledge, it had already been adapted into several textbooks, including Introduction to Protein DNA Infection by Gary Stomon. 3DNA parameters have been adapted into Nucleic Acid Database, NDD. 
Here is one example of a DNA structure, the famous Dixon dodecamer. Here the citation of three DNA of the two three DNA papers. Three DNA also laid the foundation for the 3D DART and the 2X 3DNA resources. 3D DART stand for 3DNA driven DNA analysis and rebuilding tools. It uses 3DNA rebuilding functionality. 2X 3DNA extends the capability of 3DNA package to Gromax MD trajectory analysis. DSSR is the next generation of 3DNA. I have continuously developed the 3D, uh, DSSR for more than 10 years, taking advantage of my expert domain knowledge of nucleotide structures, detail-oriented software engineering skills, and extensive user support experience. Three DNA uh, DSHR includes all the battle tested features of three DNA plus many, many more. The DSSR logo has X3 DNA in it. So far, I have published three DSSR papers, all in nuclear acid research. The 2015 NR paper focus on the structure analysis and annotation of RNA structures. The DSSR GMO and the DSSR PEMO integration were published in 2017 and 2020 respectively. DSSR has three major functions and identification and analysis, block wheel schematic, at the once model building. It can be integrated into other resources very easily. It has unique feature. In the following, I will give a talk on each of these topics. First, let's focus on identification and analysis. I will use some typical examples built on literature citations. Before I doing that, I will give you an a quick overview of how DSSR actually works. DSSR is a command line program. All the features I'm going to talk about are integrated into a small executable x DNA DSSR, which is only 1.8 megabytes. It has no external dependencies so that you can easily get started just starting with the main edge for help. DSSR can take PDB as import or MMC as import. It can also generate a JSON output for easy parsing. For the classic tRNA, you can run the program like this. You give the import and give the output. The program automatically identifies 76 nucleotides, including 40 modified nucleotides. It identifies 34 bit pairs, two helices corresponding to the two arms of the arrow shaped tertiary structure, four stems. It identifies three helping loops, including the anti codon loop and the one junction, which is round about in the 2D clover leaf secondary structure. Here is the output of the bit pair, where you can see it gives the identity of the nucleotide forming the pair. Also, I can give you the name of the bit pair, including watson crick bit pair, wall pair, and the no watson crick bit pair. This is a reward hook scene, a reward watson crick bit pair. And also classify the bit pair using Sanger annotation, Leontes Westhoff annotation, and one of DSSR unique annotation. Moreover, DSSR generate 
sec secondary structure in three common formats. This file can be fitted directly into Warner to generate this 2D diagram you are so familiar with. With that background, let's see what other users are making use of DSSR. Remember Krishna Lab used the DSSR to extract bit pair information of a ribosome RNA in the publication in Science in 2017. The digital research team used the DSSR to analyze bit stacking interaction in single strand RNA tetramer in their RNA force field. The Sujie Chen lab using DSSR to identify 2D structures from 3D atomic coordinates. DSSR not only automated the process, but review, removed human errors. It saves you time. It gets the job done. In two nature papers in 2020, DSSR has been used to identify Watson Creek and the no Watson Creek bit pairs, and have been used to calculate shape parameters, including the groove width, helical parameters. Along with PIMO, DSSR produced block wheel schematics that are simple, effective, and aesthetically pleasing. In block wheel schematic, DSSR generate blocks, bit blocks that make the bit identity, bit pairing and the stacking obvious. Using this color code following the NDB convention, G is green, C is color yellow, A is red, U is cyan, and T is blue. You can immediately see in this figure, there are two stacked A colored red, and the one mismatch GG pair and the GC pair green and the yellow and the UA pair sign and right. You can also immediately see the bolt out U colored cyan. On top of that, DSSR produced Watson Creek bit pair block that revealed the double helix regions and the groove. The main groove is colored black, the major groove is whatever color the base is associated with. You can immediately see this many group, this magic group, and this many group fits in you, and this many group fits in you. Moreover, DSSR can automatically identify G tetris and use a square block to represent this G tetris. Using this representation, you can immediately see that this structure contains two G tetris. You can also see the looped residue. This is the G colored green, it's a T in blue, and the C in yellow. To give you a better understanding of how DSHR's PEMO schematic compared with other, let's have a look of the PEP aptamer in complex with HBC, a, re a recent publication in Nature Chemical Biology. On the left is a published result. On the right, it generates automatically with the DSSR. I will give you a couple of seconds to see for yourself. As you can see, the DSSR can give you the magic groove, magic groove very clearly. This is the double collection with magic groove fitting you. This is a helping loop. And this is the stacking of C, A, A, U. Now this is HBC, the legend, and this it is a quadruple plate with U, with a C in yellow, U in cyan, and a G underneath it. This is very clear in this schematic, where it not, may not be that obvious from the left one. Also, this generates automatically in less than a second. I don't know how much effort you also spent to generate this figure. Here is another example of a chair type telomeric DNA G quadruplex. Here on the left, it's uh, taken directly from publication. On the right, 
is a DSSR panel generation. Again, you can see the three layered G coral plaque. On bottom of it, simple by color coding, you see the AA mismatch pair, which has a propeller on it. This not planar, that is propeller, large propeller with this bit pair. The block wheel schematics are highly acclaimed. In the Faculty Opinions website, DSSR website have been rated as very good. It is classified as good for teaching. The web interface was recognized as very simple and effective, and is highly recommended. Here are the 12 tower images of our own journal in 2021. The images were provided by the NDB. They were generated using DSSR and the PIMO. The 2020 NAR paper was cited explicitly. This is a single, single author paper I have published in my scientific career. You can generate all these schematic images very, very easily by using this web interface. Here, you can just like, click a PDB ID or you can upload it your structure simply by using the URL or upload it any of your PDB or MM save file. You can customize it using some common option or you can download the PIMO session file to customize to any way you like. DSSR also has advanced model building capabilities, including RNA modeling, DNA protein complex, G quadruplex, in addition to 3 DNAs, you know, fiber model, customized model by sequence and the parameters. 3 DNA DSSR has been used by Merck scientists for RNA modeling. In April 2015, I received a message from Merck scientists asking for permission to use a modeling software I have developed for their project on, in drug design. I was so happy that 3DNA could find a use in a big pharma and I approved their request. Later that year, I noticed this nature publication by the Merck scientists. In this paper, 3DNA was explicitly stated that the homology model would contract using program muted basis of the 3DNA package. Notice that in 2015, the DSSR paper was not published yet. This special module was distributed as part of 3DNA. In a follow-up paper by Merck scientists in 2017, 3DNA was stated again in, in, the, in this way. It is worth noting that this module has been integrated into DSSR and substantially improved. DSSR can perform template-based assembly of DNA protein complex. Here are two chromatin-like models. They are built using PDB entry 4XZK. By simply varying the length of the linker, you can see that you can generate two quite different topologies of this model. On the left, it's sort of like a stacking. On the right, it's more complicated. I generate this simply for fun because the program can do it. I'm sure there are some applications for this module. DHHR also can generate a circular DNA with perfect plan geometry. On the left is a schematic wheel of 100 bit pairs. On the right, it has 150 bit pairs. These are generated in the command line in less than a second. DSSR also have unique model building capabilities for G quadruplex. Here it's just like a schematic of a ladder, a rack, which have no twist. All the G, G tetrids have similar face. On the right, I introduced 30 degree twist and also alternating the faces of the G tetrid at up or down, colored green or black. DSSR itself can do a lot. 
it can achieve much, much more by easily integrate into other resources. The DSSR GMO integration bring the SQL-like queries into GMO. For example, you can select junctions or select no words and correct bit pairs using the new GMO command called in right. This work was done in collaboration with Bob Hansen, the principal PEMO developer. This work was published in NR in 2017, and it was highlighted in the cover. Again, if, uh, if you are interested, the cover image is reproducible. The DSSR PEMO integration brings innovative schematics in nucleic added structures, not, at the bit, not only at the bit, pair, bit level, but also at the bit pair level, at the G quadruplex level. This work was done with Thomas Holder when he was the principal PEMO developer. Thomas wrote the DSSR, DSSR PEMO plugin so that user can generate this schematic interactively within PEMO. In addition to DSSR GMO and the DSSR PEMO integration, which I initiated, DSSR had also been used by, many, so many, by so many other bioinformatic resources. Here is a list of the 16 published ones. They cover a broad range of topics in structural bioinformatics of nucleases. For example, the URS stands for Universe of RNA Structures. I will take total it for G quadruplexes. DNA ProDB stands for DNA Protein Database. And the list keeps growing. PDB Redo also make use of DSSR, as you can see from the logo. And I'm honored to be a co-author of a recent publication with PDV Redo, which provides a new method for restraints and validations of nuclear acid structures. DSR's inter systemic integrated approach enables no application to be developed quickly. Here are two examples I have developed over the past couple of years, uh, several years. One is the transient fact that DNA complexes containing five methyl C. I perform uh, analysis of all these structures in the protein data bank. And this work gives you a rationale of five methods in recognition by transcribing factors. And I also created annotated list of the integrated motif, so-called I motif in the protein data bank, which have the C plus C pairs. This is an unpublished result. But in the following, I will focus on one thing I have done, which is already available on the website. Everyone can have access. This is a feature for G quadruplex. I have already talked about the schematics and some modern capabilities. In the next, I will focus on just on the identification and annotation of the G quadruplex. So a very simple question, how many G quadruplexes are in the PDB? You would assume this is a very, very simple question, but the leading author can come up with very different answers. For example, in the 2021 paper by Stephen Needle, I gave a number of 520. In another publication, I gave a number of 246. They differ by a factor of two. So which one is correct? It turned out they are all off the market. The actual number at the end of 2020 is 372. As of early this month, the number is 415. How do I know? Because I use DSHR to identify the G quadruplex automatically from atomic coordinates. 
he gave the number without a dot. Just to give you a quick overview of G coroplex, uniform unimolecular G coroplex are formed by G tetrids connected by the loop region. The loop can be lateral or diagonal or propeller with a double chain reversal. Depending on the order of the loops, the G coroplex with four trend can be any parallel parallel or mixed. Overall, the G quadruplex are highly polymorphic, much more complicated than the double helix DNA or RNA. In 2018, the Weber de Silva lab published a new, new structure descriptor for to characterize G quadruplex systemically. Here is figure one from the figure, giving the definition and illustrate with six examples. For example, for 148D, uh, here the two means there are two layers of G tetris. The arrow means a lateral loop, and N and W means a narrow and wide growth respectively. However, in the figure one of the six examples, two of them are the, the described are signed incorrectly. For PDB 2 GKU and the 2 LOD, the group width N narrow W wide are reversed for three cases. And I communicate with the web desk server and he acknowledged the mistake. And currently we are working collaboratively on the revised version of the descriptor. Using DSSR, I have accumulated, I have curated a list of all the G quadruplex structures in a protein data bank. The resource is called the G4DB. And the results are presented using a dynamic HTML table, which allows flexible search. I know that this has been used by some experimentalists in the field. For example, simply typing the actamo in the search box, you will immediately feel that there are 46, 64 entries out of the 415 st structures. If you combine ectomer and the chair confirmation of the structure, you will immediately reduce the heat to 22. For each of the G quadruplex, the DSHR G4DB provides a comprehensive annotation. Here is a small portion of it where you can see the web that several nomenclature is automatically derived. And also the program give you a common name. This is a chair type of structure. The DSS are also calculated rigid body parameters. Here is right in the twist using the same formula as for DNA double helix. The DSS are also give list, detailed list of the loop given the type and identity. From here, you can ambiguously to get all the information you need for follow-up analysis if you want to do. <clears throat> so far, I have shown you the most visible features of DSSR, including identification analysis, block wheel schematics, and the model building, and also its integration into other bioinformatic resources. And that has special feature for G quadruplexes. Under, under, under the scene, however, that's a lot of hard work has been done. I have the, the details are essential for software product. I have developed the DSSR 
using strict ANSIC. And mm -hmm. I treat warnings at errors. I use the most stringent compiler options I have available to test the program. I also use well grant to check for memory leak so that the program can run without memory leaks. For each major release of DSSR, I test the program using all the nucleated structures in the protein data bank so that I can be sure that the program works and not crash. So in the end, I will say DSSR is an integrated software tool with unmatched capabilities in RNA and DNA structure bioinformatics. Here are the three major resources, web resources you can make use of. They are all available on the x3dna.org. First, with web x3dna.org, which covers all the new features of 3DNA in a very easy, easy to use web interface. The schematic.x3dna service is not only provide schematics, it also provides JSON and a human readable output so that if you want get a feeling of what DSLR has to offer. Just go to this website. If you are interested in G quadruplex in the protein data bank, this is a resource that is well worth your time to check out. A DSSR is a command line program. It is very, very small. It's less than two megabytes. It has no dependency of any third party library whatsoever. It can be set up. It has no setup, no configuration needed. You can get it up and running within a couple of minutes after you get. If you want some example, this minus edge or minus help command option, you get it started very quickly. Also, there is a professional user manual currently at 206 pages. And finally, I would like to acknowledge Hammer Bootmarker, Wilma Olsen. and bright for that, bright and the best for their heart and the 3DNA user community. And the thank you for attending the webinar. Let me show you one thing I want to show. Since we still have time, I think I, I can give you some live demo so that you can see how DSSR really works. Okay. Well, there, here is this, uh, a folder with these three files. Just tap x 3 DNA DSSR, minus ash. You should get this information. This example should show you how to get started very, very quickly. For example, if you get the X3D minus I, one EHD, PDB, you will get this output very quickly. It takes less than zero seconds. Okay, less than one second because it's too little. This is the output. What does the output look like? This is a bit pair. Here, this is a multiplet where it's a hair level bit association in the core planar geometry. Here, just like a triplet. This is a double helix region of this tRNA. 
it had two helices. And this is a four stamps. This, this is a stacking of the nucleotide, which are not in the double helical region. Here is the list of the three helping loops. And this is the junction loop. In the end, you can see that there are several additional files where you can have access to. If you have a list, now you can see there are many more files here. This dot .dbn, dot .ct are the second structure where you can easily use to generate a 2D diagram. Let me give you an example of how it works. This is Rana, one of uh, my favorite 2D structure and uh, 2D structure viewer. Let's delete this one and then open this file. Go to this demo. This is a, you can use .ct, .dbn, .psq. I prefer .dt, .ct connectable because it has more information. From here, you can see, you can, you can generate this figure automatically. Oh, sorry. And you can customize this in whatever way you like. There are so many options. This is very handy to For example, you can just like uh, to show this numbering how many bit pairs and you can have the view still you can draw using lander diagram again there are so many features you can play with in addition to using let's uh let's clean it up because they are generate so many things now you have this one. You can also run directly using a zip file. Again, the program run in a similar way. Moreover, you can use the JSON output so that you can generate the, figure, uh, the output in the structure format that can be easily integrated into some other resources. The JSON output is one line. It is not for human to read. But if you have some other GQ, it's one of the you know, parser of command line parser of JSON. You can see this is how you can generate. This is a junction. This is a four-way junction where they give the detailed information. For example, you can use the pairs and I'll give you all the bit pair information. So this is very, very easy to, to use. Let's give you another example of, here is a schematic. Oh, this is a website of schematic xcdme.org. Here you can just on the top, you can just go over Give you some quick overview of how this structure, what is DSS panel structure schematic look like. If you like, you can download some of these figures. And you can, from here, you can input for all the DNA nucleic structure in your protein deep bank. They are already pre calculated. I update this list once every week. For example, if you put one EHD, you will get this output. Here is just like a very simple overview of this with some meta information and also with this schematic in six orientation. I will draw your attention to this output. This is a text output and also that JSON output.
if you want just have a general idea of what schematic look like, you can have a quickly, you know, this is a run, uh, sample selection, random selection of the 30 or 60 entries. Oh, this is a good example. You can see that a lot of A's, okay, this is A, color red, right. five of them, it's just five, four layers. On top of it, it's just like a five T's. So this sometimes, you know, like you can have a quick look of, of this. This is, must be A DNA, many group, magic group. This is DNA protein complex. So this gives you some general idea on how you can In this part, you can specify, uh, you know, the PDB or MFC coordinates. You can use, you know, the PDB file or MMC file, or you can upload it, a PDB file using this option. Let's use, uh, you know, the MMC and using just to run the program. Give your left demo to see how it works. It take maybe. Is it running? Okay, so this here the result. You generate it automatically. You can download it, all this image in the turbo file. You can download the PAML session file where you can play around to do customize in the way you like. At the end of it, you can also have the structure feature in text format, in JSON format. Let's look at the G4. This is the G4 updated uh, early, uh, early this month. You can use, you know, F-T-A-M-E-R here, got 64. You can just go chair form, you go 22. This is what I use for the slide. If you want to have only accurate structure, so you have only 17 left. So you can sort this in a very simple way. When you click on this, you will generate annotation. Now this gives you an example what annotation look like. Here it's just like for the helices, and this, this is the stacking diagram where you can see how is the, you know, the, each of the steps are stacked. At the top, at the bottom, you have see what they call the G4 stem. It will give you the web the server annotation and this is the common name. This is the detailed orientation, uh, annotation I show in the slide. Okay, so that's what I want to share with you for now. So if you have any question, I'll be very happy to answer them. Okay, Stephen, that's up to you. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. It was very nice. And the demo was very interesting. Uh, so there's no questions in the chat right now. If anyone has questions, then please type them in. But so I have a question for you. So I, um, during my PhD, which I finished recently, I was using one of your old three DNA programs. I think the, the find pair program. Mm -hmm. So I think my game was just to take a PDB structure and find the the rigid base pairs. So mm -hmm. is it fine to still use that sort of old software you mentioned you wrote quite a long time ago? So would you say, is it fine to still use that software? Or would you suggest that I use your newer DSSR software? And if I did okay. use it, would it give me the same outputs as the old three DNA fine pair software? Okay, so as you asked a very good question. For three DNA, which is called a suite of program, <clears throat> the distribution covered more than 20, you know, uh, C mm. program plus uh, Ruby Pro uh, script. So find the pair is one of the component prepare the input for analyze. Yeah. And this is just like for DSSR, all these features are integrated into one, just use the command option. The program automatically generates the input for you for, and uh, analyze it. But if you want to have some control of it, you can generate the input and they make any modification of it and then just like a run analysis using that modified list for analysis. So this just makes life so much easier have only one program and cover everything just using different command option or different module. 
So it's much easier, the more modern version of it. So I would suggest, you know, that in the future, you know, DSSR is the way to go. Also, I'm no longer supporting DS3 DNA anymore because this is, for me, it's the past. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So would the, so yeah, would the, it, it would still give sort of the same, the same results, let's say. Yes, you, yes, uh, you know, for the, you, because there are some subtle difference, but for the bit pair, for more than trick bit pair, it still gives us identical numerical parameters. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say, you know, the DSSR is built on 3D only. All the core features are there. It's not just like a brand new, just for the type of brand new claim something new, but it's built step by step. All my, over my past 20 years career, I just built one thing toward the DSSR. I see, I'll have to update some of our workflows, I think, to, to use it. <laughs> And I, I actually, you know, it's much easier to use than 3D. 3D it got set up, you know, set up environment variable mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, for the command pass and for the, you know, where did file look, where the look, you know, but for DSSR, everything is just one small program that covers everything. I activate uh, the raise hand option. So if people want to just raise their hand and make directly the question, they can do it. Maybe someone is just too much to write a question in the in the panel, but we have a question coming up. Uh, yes, yeah, so here we got a question from uh, Jiri. Uh, is there any good reason producing B1 slash B2 annotations for RNAs? Uh, like in the one EHZ example. Uh, yeah, okay. So the B1, B2 confirmation, it's actually started uh, with the DNA. And uh, for RNA, we would normally assume it's a single trend, it's a C2 prime window, it's, you know, but actually it's more complicated. And there are some, for example, if for the for some of our RNA structure confirmation, it can have a C2 sugar confirmation. For backbone, so basically, um, we won't assume that B1, B2, you know, does not happen at all. But this program analyze, when you 3D, DSR analyze structure, it's take DNA and RNA simultaneously as the same, you know, it do not special treatment. It just use the same algorithm and to clarify whether it's B2 or B1 using each theta, it's a torsion angle. So that's nothing technically, you know, complicated with that. It's just using the same classification for RNA and apply to the DNA structure. Whether, you know, it makes sense to the end user, it's up to them to decide it. But given that choice, you may notice some of the surprise you won't expect. So yeah, so the follow-up to that was, is it just a wrong, misleading result? Okay, the true way the true, you know, the mis whether misleading or not, you know, it's just like uh, up to the user to decide it. For example, when I, several, a long time ago, the people asked a question about you just, for the DNA protein cap complex, you could assume the DNA is in B form. And just using cDNA, using it's called the P parameter, identify part of it in A form. And using this tool, analyze it consistently, may give you some surprise. And that part of ADNA confirmation in DNA complex, DNA protein complex, this is the paper I think is well recognized. And I think people should be open minded. And take a tool as a tool, do not be prejudged by whatever your predict is. You know, and as far as DSSR concerned, that backbone torsion angle is a tiny, tiny piece of what DSSR do offer. If you don't mention it, I may not pay attention to it at all. And if, if you misuse that information, it's actually up to you. And this is a tool for you to make use of. So I want to ask you, what will be your following step? In which direction will it go now? Yeah, that is, uh, you know, that is a DSSR, you know, as I said, in, in, integrate all these features into one. So there's, there's something, 
I mentioned the project for the uh, transient fact uh, recognition of a five methyl C. And also just like a recent report a list of the indicated motif. There are so many other structure features in the protein in the protein data bank that can be easily done with DSSR. Just that the infrastructure already put in there. So you have the thinking building structure. So to build building some structure or some building option for a different RNA motif. Yes, this is this, this for the analysis and notation. But for the only for the modeling part, this is the most that you know in high demand in the field. A lot of you know that you can do analysis given the truck found you know are bit pair, you know, wasn't Craig knows some of the so-called motif. But building the structure from this uh, you know component, it's a totally different story. The DSSR is a unique position to do that. Also, that is a a lot of people are using DSSR in the analysis of the molecular dynamic simulation, you know, and there is some rudimentary support of it, but I think the more can be done, you know, how to better integrate DSSR into the molecular dynamic field. So which type of format are you supporting now? Currently, you know, I'm just like using- Coming you from know, the- Molecular simulation or from other. Oh, molecular software. simulation for DSSR, it's not it's neutral to you know Gromax, Android Chan. It do not handle this um, pro, you know you know net format of that. It just started with uh, MFC, you know uh, with MMC or PDB format in the model and the model, and just standard format generates you know the JSON output format. The JSON output format can be passed, and because DSSR have so many structure features. It's already there. You can just like a fill the whatever you want for a downstream analysis. So this is just like this is a very different from you know what are Ambra, Gramix, specific analysis pipelines, and this new to all of them. It have much more to offer because of data studying it parameters already. What I was meaning, and do you so you read the trajectory in a PDB format? Yeah, I read in the PDB format, a PDB oh, import in the PDB format or MMC format. Uh, sorry, could you say the second one because I could call MMC macro. Ah. Yeah, MMC. This is a, this is our standard format. I want to you know follow to or other you know binary, preparatory whatever called the format. I I I don't want to get DSR involved. So that okay, can... okay. So uh, because there would be the challenge that those formats require. So for in some, uh, if you have a, a lot of snapshots, they will yeah, require I want a lot of- Yeah, I want to bear DHR neutral to all that, to, to all data. I don't want DHR to be tied to this and that third party, you know. We, we, we all follow the standard. We communicate through the standard protocol, just like a JSON, just like a standard text file. That's my philosophy. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, the process for processing, the a trajectory you will suggest that the user will extract a PDB or every mm -hmm. snapshot, it will be read the first from the RSR and then extract the second one and will be read it. That is yeah, what yes. the, the loop yeah. that will be. That is what yeah. and then yeah, yeah. I mean I mean do you I mean, generate I mean, you keep the information also, for example, of time when you have when you read the PDB. You what? have time information in your output or not? No, because when you have the you know the PDB uh, PDB and you know model and the model you know example, you, you have that information you know put in a sequential order in your trajectory in the PDB file. So the you know program just like the DSR just follow whatever you give it to analyze. It's not that smart, but you do what asked to do, you know, <laughs> rigorously. Also, just like you know. I mentioned you know, do X-ray DNA. This is a web survey developed by some guy in Germany. So it's just like this is built on top of 3 DNA. Also, I will say, you know, DSSR has so much more to offer. The, the guy, you know, one you are, you know, we were mentioning, you know, this B1, B2 classification. This is a tiny, tiny piece of whatever DSSR to offer. I do not even pay attention to that <laughs> before this question was asked. And I'm sorry for the, whatever misleading that may give you, but this is a tiny, tiny piece of the DSSR. It's not in one of the slides. It's not in any of my paper to be mentioned at all. So that, you know, if you want to know, if you can give me 
better suggestion how to clarify your, your confusion, I would, love to, I would love to hear. So I have a question about the, so the, the software development. So you mentioned you use strict NCC for all of it. So having done some of that myself, that's quite a, it's quite a lot of work. So why, why have you chosen to program it that way? Okay, so I use C because C is a mature language. It is a very uh, simple, but not easy for sure. But I'm experienced enough so that I know C so well, so that programming is not an issue for me at all. The basic part, most important part of understanding. So I use a C, I use strict C so that I can compare the program right away in Windows, in Linux, in Mac. I spend so much time so that it make the program so easy to use so that a user can just like download the program, get it run in a second, in a minute. You do not have the load load in the software, no day you got the got the you know there's a dependency issue, the producibility issue. I spend so much time so that a user can make use of the etc for their project. I spend so much time so that I can develop software so that I do not need to support the boring, you know. The boring, just like, you know, how to get DSSR set up, go to get, you know, this configuration. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, yeah, yeah. Also, just like, you know, after this, when you got the DSSR, I have nearly never hear a usual question, how to set up DSSR, how to get it up running. That problem by design is gone. To me, it's a relief. To the user, it's a relief. It's a win-win. It just need me to spend so much late net effort to get the engineer in a way that it's solid, it's useful, it is robust. Thanks. It is, it is certainly a deliberate decision. And I did the data based on my period was spot in 3 DNA. Okay, so I think if there are no further questions, uh, we will thank you again. And uh, for all the participants, uh, I will just mention that we will start again our series in January with the uh, Bioxel. Um, Bioxel webinar will start again in January. Please follow the mailing list or the newsletter to know more. It will be definitely a, a webinar on the Gromax, new Gromax release 2027. And there will be also a webinar from ABI on how to use social media in research. And then I thank you everybody. And I, I take the occasion to wish you a good start of the new year. Bye.